believer was not shown this scripture that when you get born again the day you are coming to, to, the, to the cross you come and you receive the joy of salvation but the minute you finish be sober <laughs> be vigilant do you know what it means to be vigilant the term that Peter is using here is a military term it's for a man who is a gatekeeper a watchman you stand at your post the slightest movement you can discern it now people allow all kinds of people become their friends all kinds of people enter into your space Anybody sends you face request, friend request on Facebook, you accept. You are looking to grow Facebook friends to become 5,000. When you finish, go to UBA, they will give you money. <laughs> there is free money for people who have 5,000 friends on Facebook. Just go and collect your own on Tuesday. Everybody is your associate. Listen, brethren, the, the, the warfare we are fighting... There's a, there a posture it calls being sober. That's why they hated our fathers. When they got born again, they gave them a name. They called them Jim Jim. Some of them took it to the extreme. They didn't know how to smile again. That one is extreme. I didn't say you should. <laughs> I didn't say you should not be smiling again. But the whole idea is there's a post. You are sober. You know why you are sober? You remember that this world is transient and it is he that endures to them. My brother, you know why the Bible says endures? There will be opposition. And with opposition will come pressure for compromise. You will have to endure that pressure. Ah, man of God, you are about to go for youth service. You will come and tell me. Do you know what happens in youth service? I've seen Christian girls go for youth service and come back lost. My sister is shaking her head. She knows what I'm saying. Lost. It's youth service that she decided she'll go and lose her virginity. Which one you, when you see the boy, ah, you'll be ashamed. Just confinement. Confinement. Where you are. You can't control your appetites. The devil doesn't need much. The devil doesn't need a big opening. He just needs a crack. If he finds it, he will exploit it. So he says what? Be sober. Be vigilant. Your number one enemy in this war is the devil himself. When you begin to march for saber oath, you will realize that your contention will be with the devil himself. And the thing about the devil is, he's not going to come and say, I am the devil. Oh, oh if he comes like that, even the weakest amongst us can discern him. So he will come with subtlety. He will come with all kinds of things. All he needs is a crack. At this table tonight, eh? When you come, if you are weak, beg God. Say, as I partake, give me strength. Ha! Huh. You know when I read about Christians that died for Jesus? Eh? You know what me I think about? Their final moments. Don't, don't make no mistake about it. As they were there, they had hope that God will save them. Are you with me? They had hope. Till the last minute, they continued to hope. Some of those Christians, they used, they used them as street light. They would hang them on a pole, pour foil upon them, and then light them to give light to the street. You are alive and your flesh is burning. Can you imagine the agonizing cries that will pierce the air? Some of them, all they will have on their lips is, Jesus, where are you? Jesus. And you want to go to that heaven where they went. And the, the thing that is making you to deny Jesus now is that you don't have money. 
Your concern is that you are eating once a day. Listen, bro. My wife is here. You can count on two hands the number of times I eat twice a day in a year. She's here. I wanted to change my routine because I'm eating once a day. My belly is growing. I say, oh. Joshua said, don't be eating in the night. He will, he will tell you, I, eat, I can eat at 11. Just to make sure there is food in the stomach for that day. So I said, okay, let me save myself. When my father in the Lord came, I saw he had changed his routine. So me, I learned by, by, by watching. So I said, okay, let me move my own. So I'll be eating 3 p.m. every day. Just eat 3, and then I rest for the rest of the day. Then my wife said, where will you see the food? You know the Greek carry cooler go office. I wonder how people carry cooler. Uh -uh. I'm going to work. I'll not carry cooler like this. <laughs> that day has not come. Cooler, cooler. When souls are perishing, I'm carrying cooler. The only, only place you will see the food is when you come home. Abi, you want to go and be buying food outside? I can't answer that question, yes or no. Because you answer yes, there will be a problem. You answer no, there will be a problem. So don't answer. So I left it. You want to deny God because you are, you, you are eating once a day. Once a day, bro. Once a day. While there are people who did not have food, they couldn't use food to break them. They withheld their food, withheld their water. They saw that they were still not compromised, and they brought them out to kill them. It's because we don't know we are at war. The people who serve Satan, they can die for him. We don't know we are at war. And we don't know that our number one enemy is not an old man in the village. It's Satan. And you see, if you are going to win Satan, the Bible says the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. You are not going to win Satan with swords and with spears, with knives and with clubs. No. Do you know that that's the whole reason why 1 Samuel chapter 17 is in the Bible? You know when you read 1 Samuel chapter 17, what you see there, you just hear, you read about David and Goliath, you go and say, praise the Lord. That entire scripture was to tell you that the Christian's warfare is spiritual. Go back and read it. Read it through these lenses I'm giving you now. You will see things you have never seen before. First of all, let me run, let me run commentary. Hmm? Both armies are encamped in array opposite each other. Then what does Goliath shout? Goliath comes and he says, I defy the armies of Israel. I defy the armies of Israel. Bring me a man. I am a man. Bring me a man. If your man is able to defeat me, we will become your slaves. But if I'm able to defeat your man, you will become our slaves. Then the Bible introduces David. That David's father now says to him, go and take supplies to your brothers who are in battle. Then David appears there. Then the Bible says that while David is there at the storekeeper's place, because in war, they had people who stayed with the supplies. When he arrived there, the Philistine again said what he had been saying, and David heard it. Now, when David heard it, David turned and said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that defies the armies of the living God? Are you seeing the transition? Um, Goliath thought that he was dealing with the armies of Israel. A spiritual man appeared and descended the scenario. And he said, ah, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. We look like men, 
but there is one amongst us he's the lord of hosts Sabaoth. he introduced covenant circumcision was covenant so while all the others were afraid david realized that it was spiritual warfare at work that this was a battle between the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light then you go further when he now goes to meet Saul when he had finished telling them that look don't worry I'll take care of this guy they carried him to go and meet Saul then Saul says something I think that is uh, verse 42 I can't remember he says you cannot fight this guy you are but a youth find that verse for me um, uh, find that verse for me I need to find that verse huh? No, this is not it. And when you feel it, no, we'll come to 42. Go to 33. Go to 33. Aha, thank you, Holy Spirit. And Saul so said to David, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are a what? And he has been a man of war from when? Do you see the kingdoms at play here? While the kingdom of darkness trains their youth to be warriors, Saul assumed that David was also in that camp where they did not know training. So darkness had raised Goliath to be a warrior from his youth. Witches from babyhood, they are already practicing how to be master witches. But in the church, we want to share testimonies of how we, we went to Canada. People are not trained to be warriors. So somebody is going to Canada to study. He doesn't know that God is sending him there as a warrior. He goes there and loses his identity in Babylon. Somebody enters into oil and gas. He has prayed for a job and God gives him a job. The same job that God gave him Satan is the one gaining maximum profit. The job. The kingdom is not getting any advantage. David said, no, I belong to the remnant. I'm not in that category. So while all of you were sleeping, I know you people are men of war. But me, I didn't become a man of war. If darkness trained this man from his youth, I have been undergoing training. Go to the next verse. 34. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep what? His father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, 35, I went after it. Listen, bro. Your small, small battles are instrumental ranks for your glorification. If you lose in those invisible battles, you will never be pedestaled. Those little movements of lusts upon your heart. Those temptations to curb your pride. That small money in the office that you stole, that nobody till now knows that you stole. Eh? You did not know that it was warfare. You thought it was just free money that Oga will not know. You stole it, put it in your pocket. It has been recorded in the book of the words of God. That in the day that this warrior was tempted, he didn't have enough consecration to win. It has been recorded. When you will now appear before Goliath, you will not have anything to say. You will not be qualified for the victory. David said, Ah, ah, I may look like I'm nobody, because the battle is not about size, the battle is about who fights on your side. The thing about Sebaoth is that Sebaoth will fight for his own. He fights for you. He will fight with you and he will fight through you. That's the progression. At the beginning, when he's teaching you how to war, he will be fighting for you. Because you have not grown enough to stand in the battlefield and fight for him. So he will be fighting for you. 
There's another level in that, in that training where he fights with you side by side. The epitome of warfare is when you have become an excuse for his power to happen. He fights through you. If he has you in a place, he's bold enough to say, Kai! Satan can't enter worry. Kesena is there. He's bold enough to say, no, no demon can enter your family that you are there. Because you are now the excuse for the revelation of his presence, his wisdom, his power, and his glory. He said, I took a... Oh my man, Akavina, help me, Holy Ghost. I took a lion by the beard. beard. I took a bear by the beard. And I delivered the sheep. He did not only deliver the sheep from the mouth, he killed the, the team. Those of you pampering lost, I feel sorry for you. You don't know that the whole idea of Satan allowing loss to sit on your life is because he knows that your father will soon send you into the warfare to your brothers. He knows that if you don't kill lost now, you will not be able to stand before Goliath. Look at what he says. He said, your servant has killed both lion and bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them. Seeing he has done what? The armies of who? Even Saul had forgotten that he was marching in the army of the living God. He took a man that looked like a novice. Bro, I like it when they, when they, when they underestimate me. I like it. You invite me to a program. I went to one meeting once, the, 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 the senior pastor, because it was a youth meeting. It's like he was angry they invited me. So to even introduce me was a wahala. I'm sure he had, they had warned the youth, don't bring anybody that is not from this. So the youth, they, they used strong eye to bring the man of God. So the man was not happy. Then when I climbed the pulpit, <laughs> that day the Holy Ghost decided to come. He decided to show me mercy. Years ago, he decided to show me mercy. And when I finished, I went to sat, sit down. The man was coming with two hands to shake my hand. I said, ah, oh God, you have missed your, your, your opportunity. It's better they despise you. Let them say, this boy that doesn't have food. But when you step into your office, they will see a man that has been with Jesus. He said, he has... David knew what the battle was about. He knew whose name was at stake. He knew that it was spiritual warfare. Go to 42. Let me show you something. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was only a youth, ruddy and good looking. 43. So the Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. So you are seeing now that spiritual warfare. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me. I will give your flesh. I don't have time to deal with this. To the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. Do you know that those are demons? Eh? This was a man speaking from his demonic rank. I will feed your flesh. No wonder the Bible says he gave them dominion over the birds of the air. Over the beasts of the field. And over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Even things underneath the earth. What the Bible was speaking about when the Lord gave man dominion. Was speaking about the various realms. There's the heavenlies. There's the earth. There's underneath the earth. Even the water bodies. Man has dominion. If you don't understand it more than that, buy my book. Walk into a fulfilled life. I deal with this in that book. Next verse, 45. Then David said to the Philistine. You come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you how? Name of the Lord of hosts. Ha, 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 ha. He activated Sebaoth. He said, I may look like I'm alone, but I do not match alone. There's one that fights with me. I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. The God of the armies of Israel, whom you have what? Defied. The Lord, he 
is a man of war. The Lord is his name. He's a man of war. Because we've not been taught. Are you seeing what I just showed you now? Some of you have read this scripture many times. You didn't know that it was a picture of spiritual warfare. Your number one enemy is the devil. Bro, he won't give you breathing space. He's looking. Bro, do you know what that means? His desire is to devour. He's looking. He's looking. Oh, preach to your neighbor. Say, I won't be meat for Satan. Oh, you are not preaching it. Say, I won't be meat for Satan. So your number one enemy is the devil? Your second enemy is the world. First John chapter 2, verse 15. The world. First John chapter 2, verse 15. Help me quickly. I need to move further in the next 10 minutes. So we'll move into the communion. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. I was speaking about our weapons not being carnal. That's what took me to 1 Samuel 17, right? The Holy Spirit just reminded me now. The reason David refused to fight in the uniform that Saul gave to him was because in this warfare, is not knives, is not guns. Your number one weapon in dealing with Satan are the words of your mouth. Your words. Your words. Say unto the righteous, he shall be what? Well with you. If you have faith like a mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, be thou removed. And cast into the sea. See, your words are more powerful than your thoughts. When things are beginning to build in your mind, because that is the at the arena of the warfare that Satan tries to build is in your mind. When he begins to inject your mind with all kinds of things, open your mouth and talk back. Talk. I don't speak to my children anyhow. Yes, I can discipline them. I can shout. But I'm always careful to choose my words. Words! In this warfare, your words are powerful. How did Jesus call Lazarus out of the grave? Comfort. Well, you know why our words are like sandpaper? You know why our words are lightweight? Because our tongue is not consecrated. For your words to be piercing in the arena of warfare, your tongue must be consecrated. You want to sing, give me banana, take banana, then come and stand in front of Satan to say, I bind you. You want to laugh at all these stupid jokes on Facebook and then just think that, that life is a game. At the slightest opportunity you are cursing, You are a tail bearer. You are a backbiter. You are a rumor peddler. The same tongue. And you don't know that the reason Satan has afflicted you with that yoke is so that when it comes to warfare, you will be meat for the devil. You see me? I hate to speak about something that is not true to somebody. Have you wondered why the Bible says the Lord hates a lying tongue? Do you know why? It makes his armies weak before Satan. Because a tongue that lies cannot carry power. One clown said, if you tell the truth, you die. If you tell the lie, you die. So why don't you tell the truth and die? He's a clown. Hmm? Me, I'm determined I would rather tell the truth. If you come and tell me, see what they did, I'll say, let me call the person. So you will say it in the person's phone. When you know I'm like that, they don't come and tell me stories. 
they know that I will call the person. Or I will quote you in your front. I say, uh -huh. that's how Obaro told me. Obaro, you stole me. <laughs> I will quote you in the person's front. Your first weapon is your words. The second thing the Bible says is that resist the devil. Resist the devil and he will flee. Your posture of resistance is that you must be a lover of the truth of God's word. A student of the Bible. One totally surrendered to his commandments. Otherwise, you will not be able to resist. The strength of your resistance is only as deep as your commitment to God's laws. Resist! The word of God. You must be a lover of truth. You must know God's commandment. And you must be one who is uncompromisingly committed to keeping God's laws. Because it's from the word of God you will have strength to be able to say no. To be able to resist Satan when he comes with his lies. The Bible calls it the wiles of the devil. You know why it is wiles? You need a discerning eye to know that, know what he is after. You need a discerning eye. The first two years of my marriage, me and my wife were like cat and rat. Oh, I didn't have a father who sat me down and taught me how to be a man. Everything I learned about a woman, I learned from reading books. I learned from studying the... I went to the school of Satan to become at a master at the manipulation of women. I learned from Satan. I became so good at it, I didn't know how to love a woman. So the first two years were like, were like war. War. Then one day I sat in the office, Christian Manu, I was already preaching. And I sat in the office one day and the Lord whispered to me, he said, you do not see. Kesena, you are blind. This is not about your pride. It's not about your ego. Satan is after your marriage. Your father's marriage failed. He wants yours to fail also. He wants to take away your testimony in ministry. Ah. So I came back and I called the meeting. I say, in this house, when you talk, me, I will not talk. <laughs> <laughs> Two of us cannot be talking at the same time. Let's find a way. Because I now understood that Satan was after something beyond what I was seeing with my physical eyes. If David had known that one night with Bathsheba would damage his entire family. Some of you have not read that story. His entire family. Do you know that that's the only bad thing about David's life? His entire family. His son raped his daughter. His son slept with all his wives in public glare. David ran from the palace like a fugitive, barefooted. The Bible says as he ran, he wept, climbing mountains, barefooted. One mistake. Nathan said, God will show you mercy, but your house will never recover. If David had known, Mavis, ah, Mavis, I don't know why I keep looking at you. Ah, Mavis, resist. I speak to you as a father now. Resist. There's oil on your life. Resist. Huh. Many Christians have wagered their destiny because they didn't have the weapons to fight. Your second enemy is the world. And you see, the, oh, my time is gone. You see, the expression of the world eh, is in three spirits. 
the predominant expression is what we call Babylon. Hmm? And that is the satanic system that Satan has built that, that is anti the system of God. It's a satanic system. It's called Babylon. And the God in Babylon is gold, is mammon, is money. So people will do anything for money. Sell their souls. Bow to witches. That's why Yahoo is gaining ground in our nation. That's why Hookup is gaining ground in our nation. A young man who was, who was seeking counsel from me was weeping on the phone. He got into a city. He was the one that told me that there are apps that you can download from Android and Apple Play Store now. I didn't know. You just download the app and say, I'm in so 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 place. I need a man or I need a woman. Somebody will appear where you are. There are applications. Some 15, some 16, some 18, some 25. You have a right to decide the age, the age range. Whether she should be black or he should be tall, dark and handsome. You can, on the app. Most of the time when you meet these people, they don't have Muslim names. We don't know that we are at war. And the system of the world has been rigged in such a way that if you are going to survive, your love for the world must be dead. Some of us, we are pretending that we love God. It's the world system we want. We are in love with what Satan is building and we will do anything to have our own portion in it. He says, love not the world. For if any man loveth the world, the love of the Father is not in him. The world is your enemy. The world system. The world system. They are dating sites now for married people. Eh? Where if you like to explore, they call it exploration. If you and your wife like to explore, you can join the app and you people can be exchanging partners. If you don't want to exchange partners, somebody else can come and live with you. And you people will be three together. I read on one of these new sites, because I know some of you, if I give you full details now, the first thing you do after the meeting is to go and look for it. Where a woman is living with two men. Eh? Two men. She's married to both. There's one, they are both married, man and wife, man and wife, they are all living together. They have children together. So this husband can sleep with this woman, get pregnant. This one can sleep with her, get pregnant. They are enjoying it. That system is a system of perversion. It's an expression of the world. That, that spirit is called Sodom. Then there's Egypt. Egypt is a place of slavery. These are all expressions of the world. It's your enemy. It has its financial system. It has its way it expects you to do business. It has its system of compromise. It's the world. Your last enemy is the flesh. It's the flesh. It's the flesh. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it's of the world. Give me Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 2 as I begin to tie this up. Are you getting blessed tonight? Your last enemy is the flesh. Oh, let's begin at verse 1 so that those who are not very familiar with this scripture will understand it. And you, he had made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins, verse 2, in which you once walked, according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now walks where? The sons of disobedience. Verse 3. Among whom also we once conducted ourselves, how? In the loss of what? The flesh. Fulfilling what? The desires of the flesh and of the mind. And we are by nature children of wrath 
just as the others. Your flesh. You see, brethren, the reason some of us are strict to our flesh is that we know it is a fight. <laughs> as much as I liked movies, movies, ah, you don't know. There were some people who their movies were like ventilation to me. I don't like Nigerian movies, so I liked American movies. But the problem with American movie, movies is that they had three plots. There'll be a bad guy. Then the good guy will now pursue the bad guy, or the bad guy will pursue the good guy to try and kill him. So they'll be vroom, driving anyhow. That's the pursuing plot. Then the good guy or the bad guy will meet one girl in one place then they will have sex. If those three things don't happen, it's not an American movie. Are you with me? So I found that Satan can use it to gain access to my soul. And I discovered that God wanted to do great things with my life. So I shut it down. Bro, the flesh has its own desires. That's what is theologically called your carnal nature. He says, before you were born again, how you conducted yourself was in fulfilling the desires of your flesh. Your flesh is your enemy. That's why we fast. You know, we came for 10 hours yesterday. The reason we come for all those kind of meetings is to condition the flesh. When you stay away from those kind of meetings, you are not a big boy. You are, just, you are, you are not doing yourself any good. I see young people that can't come for VG. Ah. Oga, oh you are not married now. You can't do VG. <laughs> when they hold your trousers for school fees, you won't be able to do VG. When you have wife, young lady, there's no man in your life now to tend to. You can't build a fiery prayer altar. When we leave this meeting now, me have been praying since six o'clock or seven o'clock. Eh? I lay down in one corner in the room to be alone with God. My wife has had to bathe children, had to do this, had to do. When we leave this meeting now, I will go and throw my clothes into the dead clothes basket, take a bath, cross my leg, and wait for dinner. Let it pain you. It's my right. <laughs> Shallow valley on Bori If you are a feminist, let it pain you. <laughs> eh? The one I married, that's how she loves me. Eh? She loves me like that. Hmm? You that say you will not kneel down in your, in your, on your wedding day, please, auntie, don't kneel down. But our wives take care of us and we take care of them too. Hmm? We, we recognize the order of the Bible. She will make food. And then me, I will enter WhatsApp. Because as I'm here now, there are messages from Uganda, from Cameroon, from the United States. I will now start answering. Sometimes it takes three hours. I will teach. I do Bible study with families in Pakistan. I will teach. Then I will lie down. Because by 12, I have to be up again. Then I will sleep. And then be up at 12. I'm the one that will wake up at 5. And say, Auntie, there is school home. Then the children will start getting ready. Then I will drive them to school. You can't build a prayer life now. No wonder Paul says that I, it is better that you stay unmarried. <laughs> he says stay unmarried. He says because the virgin, her only priority is to fulfill the will of God. But she that is married, her desire is to please who? Her husband. To please our husband. You can't build prayer altar now. And then where you are, you are saying, God, give me a man of fire. Auntie, God doesn't have them plenty. So he's very careful who he gives them to. Because if he gives a man of fire to a woman of, of, of cold water, that man's destiny is finished. It's the same thing with brothers. 
You don't know where you are going. The reason a woman will be loyal to a man is that the man has proven time and time and again that he follows God. He has sight. If you say, see what God says, she has seen his track record to know that when he said, God said. Ah, I used to tease my wife. When I look at her sometimes, I say, see how fine you are. I say, thank God, oh. Thank God, say you marry me. <laughs> All the things I said, they are beginning to come to pass. Oh, if they had told her, it was on a floor like this, we ate our meal, she will remember. We didn't have table. That time they used to force me that we must eat together. Hmm. It's a story for another day. <laughs> so they put the plate in a tray, we sit on the floor. My wife never complained. Say, which kind of thing be this? We not get chair. Oh. Today, there's a God in heaven. There's a God in heaven. Women, raise your children to be warriors. If you're on campus, go there as a warrior. Your flesh will fight you. Prayer is not easy for anybody. I struggle too. Eh, bro? I have to get up from the bed sometimes and walk in the room. And say, this sleep, you can't kill my destiny. No. No. Everything I have and I am is by prayer and fasting. And the grace and the mercies of God. You can't come for vigil. <laughs> I laugh in Swahili. The time will come when you face Goliath. You will now wish that the days of your youth were not wasted. Rise on your feet tonight.